This program contains graphic images of slaughtered animals. Viewer discretion is advised. It's a macabre mystery. They must kill them instantly because there's no sign of struggle. Something is killing cattle and draining their blood. I hadn't seen anything like this before in my life. Satanic cults, an unknown predator, or something else. There were markings that almost appeared as if they were footpads, if something had landed. The killer is as elusive as it is deadly. They're a monster. It's a monstrous thing that's being done. Modern science is brought to bear analyzing these gruesome attacks as Monster Quest works to find proof of the cattle killer that's stalking the plains of North America. They are not standing still. They're running. They're scared. Witnesses around the world report seeing monsters. Are they real or imaginary? Science searches for answers on Monster Quest. The prairies of North America are the breadbasket of the continent. These vast plains stretch out under spectacular skies and are home to grazing cattle, bison, and horses. But something else stalks these grassy fields, a mysterious and deadly predator with a taste for flesh. The lungs were taken, the heart was taken out, and, and the leg was taken out. His left ear was missing. His rectum had been cut. And her genitals were gone and her ear was gone. So I knew it was a mutilation. Eyewitnesses describe a consistent pattern. The cattle's udder, ears, eyes, and other soft parts are cut out. Blood is drained, but there are no signs of tracks, animal or otherwise, surrounding the body. Mysterious stories of cattle killings have circulated for centuries, but they were little more than a curiosity until just 40 years ago. The really big case, the case that, that gained international attention, occurred in September of 1967 in Colorado. Stephen Kent, a sociologist at Canada's University of Alberta, has tracked this growing phenomenon, and he says it started with the killing of a mare. The horse was named Lady at the time, although the press uh, renamed her uh, to Snippy because of all the cuts that were on the horse's body. The night before her death, the three-year-old Appaloosa appeared healthy. She returned home to be fed after grazing in a pasture for the day. Come on, lady. Uh, the next night she didn't show up at her usual time. And the family went out and searched for her what they found would haunt them forever. They found her lying in the field with most of, of the skin on her neck and head removed. Upon examination, a local vet suspected foul play but could not identify the killer. This account went international. So the snippy story became uh, really a, a stimulus for a lot of other accounts to start coming forward. Soon the police and veterinarians in Utah, Nevada, Colorado, and New Mexico were inundated with reports of the mutilation and killings of healthy cattle. Theories began to emerge about the killings. The first was that members of underground satanic or religious cults might be committing these heinous acts. The assumption is that uh, some groups, usually they get pinned on being satanic groups, have mutilated animals in order to get either blood and or sexual parts that they would use in rituals. The second theory suggested that some unknown perpetrator, human or otherwise, committed these gruesome murders and left behind evidence of sophisticated technology. People would, would bring out Geiger counters and even if the animal itself were, uh, were not radioactive, they'd often find higher than expected areas of radioactivity in the area. 
some farmers would talk about the fact that predators would not go near the dead carcass. There was something that was keeping them away. Occasionally you'd hear accounts about strange smells or an odd liquid that was found in the area and so on. In 1975, 200 incidents of mutilation were reported in Colorado. An increasingly fearful ranching community prompted a statewide investigation. That same year, the state of New Mexico began a similar inquiry. Special Agent Kenneth Rommel conducted hundreds of examinations before he revealed his controversial conclusions. Rommel held that the cause was entirely natural. The cattle killers, he said, were common predators and scavengers, coyotes, birds, and other wildlife. It is still the only official report on the public record, and most scientists agree with its conclusions. Be sure you're not dealing with natural causes, with, with naturally occurring spontaneous disease, with scavengers, with predation. Rule those things out before you ever start to consider any other possibilities. Dr. Nick Nation, a veterinary pathologist at Canada's University of Alberta, believes that most so-called mutilation cases may have a rational cause. I'm not saying that never have animals ever been mutilated by people that are mentally ill or sick in some way. What I am saying is I haven't seen it myself, and I've looked at a hell of a lot of cattle at post-mortem. But experienced ranchers see this phenomenon as proof something strange is out there. You know why they took all the intestines out of that calf and, you know, they, the way they cut that calf across the rib cage is just perfect. Nice clean cut. Pure white calf and not a drop of blood anywhere in sight different to see something like that. I've been raised out in BC on a ranch where we deal with every kind of predator and I've seen about everything. Barb Campbell, a forensic investigator, was skeptical of the rancher's claims until she saw a mutilation case in the flesh. I don't spook easily, but I got spooked. I really, really got spooked because I knew that what was before me was not natural. Campbell believes that she has proof that the killer is not a known predator. They're not just torn, they're surgically cut. There's no sign of blood. Uh, any missing part is never found. There's no sign of a struggle. And uh, sometimes the animals are found in the most awkward positions that it's impossible for them to uh, be in. Heads bent back farther than the bone, the neck can actually handle. Legs in opposite directions and it's just impossible for an animal to get like that. She believes the animals may have been tranquilized before being mutilated. It appears to me the animal is brought down instantly. In order to do that, um, you can either you know, shoot it with a a big gun, um, or you can uh, dart it. What methods are being employed? Barb Campbell believes the known mutilation carcasses across North America hide the extent of the problem. We're not hearing about all the cases because many times the rancher just buries the animal or burns the animal. Um, but uh, I Mark this out so I can see a pattern here, or look for a pattern. And there seems to be the lower section here to the east, and then it, it goes northwest. And uh, what's particularly interesting is this line from Lloydminster's to St. Walberg. So, so far, this seems to be a huge concentration, this area up here. In March of 2008, on a ranch near Lloydminster, Alberta, a prized bison bull named Frank fell victim to the mystery predator. And my dad had fed them bulls two days prior and Frank was alive and well. So something unusual happened there. Bison rancher Lee Benoit had never before seen an animal killed in this way. Sex organs were all cored right out. And, uh, and his gut was split right down the middle. Precision cut too, like it wasn't, it wasn't somebody with a hunting knife or anything like that. It was a very uh, skilled cut. 
The bizarre circumstances surrounding this killing deepened his suspicions. The scavengers hadn't gone near him. It was a little bit odd. There was no tracks, no tire tracks, no footprints of any kind anywhere near him. Deepening the mystery, the snow where the animal had fallen mysteriously melted and refroze into an odd-shaped pattern, much like a crop circle. It's the only trace left behind by whatever unidentified predator is committing these monstrous acts. Barb Campbell will gather physical traces that may identify the killer. Will the evidence point to some kind of alien presence? Monster Quest has also asked a cosmetic surgeon to try and replicate the cuts using the latest in laser technology. And local ranchers will also perform an experiment with a cow carcass, testing the surgical ability of local scavengers and predators. David Cook has seen firsthand the gruesome handiwork of the cattle killers. It was perfectly smooth, no jagged edges. We've never ever seen something like this happen before. We'd like to find out the truth, what, what really did happen. Can we drag it or haul it, Steve? A cow suffering from a condition known as foot rot has been slaughtered. We're, we're gonna go over there by the dugout, but a little to the okay. west. David Cook and his neighbor Steve Lucci will use the opportunity to perform an experiment. They want to attract the local scavengers and show that they are not capable of making the clean and surgical cuts of the cattle killer. By tomorrow there should be some something eating on this animal. Some action. Yeah. We could have uh, bears, uh, coyotes, maybe even timberwolves. The two ranchers set up motion detecting cameras to record the activity. In 24 hours, they'll come back and investigate the scavenger's reaction. Barb Campbell has found a fresh mutilation case to examine. The sudden and mysterious death of an 1800 pound bison bull as this rancher puzzled. That farmer's yard is a clear view of this field. He'd have seen something if there was anything human. This program contains graphic images of slaughtered animals. Viewer discretion is advised. Monster Quest has journeyed to the remote plains of Western Canada to investigate what's killing the cattle of North America. In the late 80s, a swift and silent killer paid a visit to this ranch. I would say right now it's about uh, 52 years with cattle, so I think I know a little bit about them. Buck Scotton has seen dead cattle scavenged by the local wildlife, but this was no ordinary death. It was the 2nd of June, uh, 87, and I found, I went out, I always check my Urines, what every third day. The carcass of this steer was unlike anything he'd seen before or since. The brush on the tail was cut off and thrown about 15 feet behind the animal. And then I got looking at the navel. The navel was cut out round, just the just the skin taken out. And then I noticed the this cut on the neck, side the neck, ahead of the shoulder was about a a seven-inch cut, I would imagine. The hair around the wound appeared to be cut or shaved. That hair was cut right with the, the wound in the neck. And there's no predator would do that, as far as I know. Scotton and his neighbors all agreed he should further investigate this grisly attack. Oh, there's probably eight or ten neighbors seeing this animal, and they, everyone figured it was tampered with, eh? So that's when I decided to take it to university. He drove the mutilated steer 100 miles to the veterinary department at Canada's University of Saskatoon. 
After examination, a vet determined that death was not unusual. Scott disagreed. He said that I hit this sticker wire first, and the reason there was no struggle with that animal, it run a quarter of a mile to a half a mile in chalk and then fell over in a coma. And did you ever hear anything so stupid as that? That, uh, that really blew me. I was upset. Whatever killed the steer left another chilling trace of its presence. Three days later, there was a little poplar tree. That tree was absolutely dead. There was not a green leaf on that tree. Every leaf was as brown as brown. And I still don't know what did that. Dr. Stephen Kent has studied the cattle killing phenomenon and discovered that other ranchers have reported dead vegetation, indicating some kind of craft paid a visit to the mutilation site. Often in or near where these dead carcasses appeared, there were uh, markings that almost appeared as if they were footpads, if something had landed. Um, some cases there would be burned grass of various sizes um, that people thought could have been, in simple terms, exhaust of some sort. So all these things uh, suggested that maybe a UFO landed. Some incidents suggest that the killers have the ability to lift and move its half-ton victims. One cow in particular was flipped over. The underside of her hide had a spiral pattern in her hair and that indicated that she was spun at high speed. Some cases are even accompanied by the sighting of strange lights. Well, these ladies were going along Highway 41 and they, this light followed them all along the side of the highway and it really scared them. It was quite a coincidence that this light was following them and that the next morning I find this cow. You know, there's something going on here. Dr. Kent, while skeptical of the UFO theory, believes ranchers are not the kind of people who exaggerate. You know, hard-working you know, decent folks who uh, want to uh, earn money often in very difficult business. So I, I'd be very surprised if most net ranchers um, would get involved in any kind of embellishment. Um, they're just trying to figure out what, what's happened. Barb Campbell has been studying the bison incident. She received a call from the ranch immediately after this mysterious death. It offered Barb the unique opportunity to investigate a fresh case. I checked for broken bones. I couldn't find anything. I looked for bullet wounds. Um, I did find some strange, unusual slits in the hide in shaved areas. There was sporadic shaving on him. Returning to the exact location of the bison's death, she found evidence that a large heat source had been present. The only ice we found in that entire field was a circle around where the carcass had been originally found, and it measured 35 feet in diameter. The large circle of ice had refrozen in an odd pattern. It was the only trace left behind by the killers. There's bizarre circumstances around this. The field was full of snow. It's a quarter section. There was no tracks coming in or out. There's 14 other bulls, and this guy was 1,780 pounds, and there was giants in that field. There's no way anyone could get near. So what happened? So how difficult would it be for someone to walk in there and uh, like daytime and nighttime to actually walk into the herd and maybe attempt to touch one or get close? Uh, well, nighttime we'd never do it. Never even come close. Yeah. And daytime, very rare. Um, especially our herd because they're wild. Um, they would defend themselves and probably attack. Barb must rely on science for answers. She put samples of the bison's hair under a microscope. Hairs appear to be, and some of them appear to be swollen on the ends where they've been severed. Um, there is also something which is sticking hairs together but this is the sample of where 
it had been taken, shaved from the hide, and it's slightly crispy. The results are puzzling. Barb sends the suspect hair to an analytical chemist who will search for any clues to the identity of the mystery predator. Dr. Nick Nation has been reviewing the same case, and his own analysis ends in a very different conclusion. Oh, to me, that's a typical scavenger. Uh, anus has been no, uh, eaten out, the abdominal cavity has been opened, the rumen has been pulled out, and rumen content spread all over the place. Uh, looks to me like he's a little on the thin side. Dr. Nation believes the animal died of natural causes and was then scavenged by coyotes. If an animal is sick or, or thin uh, and it's very cold, they're, they're in very uh, serious trouble. A long winter can be very, very uh, tough on, on animals that aren't in, in really good shape. Um, so to me, that, that looks very much like a, a fairly typical scavenging site. The owner of the bison, Lee Benoit, remains unconvinced. Scavengers tear them apart, it's, they're ripped, eh? But the rectal area on Frank was cored out as if it was burnt almost, like something high heat, because it was very precision, like it's almost as if a doctor went out there with a scalpel. So what kind of surgical equipment could have caused this damage? The, the only animal that I know that can produce a cut like that is the human animal. MonsterQuest has asked a cosmetic surgeon, Dr. Barry Leica, to investigate. Before the operation begins, Dr. Leica examines photographs of a suspected mutilation case. The animal is, is in some state of disrepair. There certainly has been some trauma. It certainly could be a laser that has made the cut, or it could be a scalpel. First, he will try to replicate these injuries using surgical steel. So we're going to take a scalpel here, and we're going to attempt to make the same cuts that have been made on the animal. This is the difficulty. Hide is a, a very thick material. It quickly becomes apparent that the mutilations are not easy to replicate with a regular scalpel. I almost have to two-hand the scalpel to do the job. This is very, very thick material. And, and to make a wound that size would take quite a while. And the question is at what cost and, and, and at why would they be even trying to attempt something like that? But you can see we've cut down down and you can even see we've serrated the edge a little bit it, it's not it's not a wound that's made by natural causes it's this rancher believes that it's not just his animals that are under threat I'm getting short of air short of oxygen This program contains graphic images of slaughtered animals. Viewer discretion is advised. Monster Quest is searching for answers to a deadly and gruesome mystery in an effort to reveal the true identity of the cattle killer of North America. When you do see it, it, it does scare you and it does make you think when you're driving at night or you see strange vehicles around and you just kind of wonder about it. In 1984, Marlene Dickey's horse was killed in a brutal manner on the plains of central Canada. Marlene and her husband discovered the dead animal in a wooded pasture. The dismembered carcass was a horrifying sight. I couldn't believe it. The lungs were taken, the heart was taken out, and, and the leg was taken out. Here's where the, um, the front leg was. 
And here's the windpipe, because when they ripped the lungs and the heart, I guess, well, they just must have ripped it awfully hard, because that's where the windpipe ended up. The local police concluded the death was caused by a natural predator. He'd never in his life seen anything like that. But his mind was changed when he went back to the barracks, and then he phoned back and said it must have been a coyote, so. Unofficially, Marlene claims the officer admitted he was not so sure. I said to him, uh, a six-year-old kid would know that it's not coyotes. And he just turned to me and said, you know, if we told the truth, what kind of panic there would be. Rancher David Cook has left a dead cow out for scavengers to test what kind of damage they will do. After 24 hours, he and a neighbor returned to check for signs of animals feeding on the carcass. She looks like she's bloated pretty heavy. Nothing. No, nothing's had touched her yet. No. Not even a bird. It's not that they won't eat it, it's just they haven't found it yet. Yeah, sometimes it takes a while. It's down? The two ranchers download the pictures from the trail cameras to see what, if anything, has visited the carcass over the past day. What time is this? While there are no signs of any large predators or scavengers, birds have been attracted by the scent. There he is. Magpie. No, one, yeah. Yeah. The 24-hour time-lapse images show that even the birds failed to take a bite out of the carcass. It's surprising that even though the region is inhabited by dozens of species of scavengers, coyotes, timber wolves, bears, and foxes, they stayed out of range of the cameras. Dr. Nick Nation, a veterinary pathologist, firmly believes scavengers could routinely make clean, smooth, and unnatural cuts. Well, we have a, a coyote skull here. The canine teeth mesh almost perfectly with each other. If you have a look here uh, at the edge of the uh, molar teeth, the very close um, approximation of these teeth allows a very sharp cutting edge to occur. This allows the coyote to create these, uh, what are referred to by some people as um, surgical-like incisions in the skin. Birds, like ravens and crows, are capable of delicately stripping out soft tissue. And if you look at this skull from an American crow, you can see that the beak is very narrow and is capable of, would be capable of entering the eye socket and removing the eye without causing any damage to the surrounding tissues. Yet experienced ranchers consistently refuse to accept this explanation. That I just don't know how I can explain this to people because it's a very mysterious death. In September 2004, Charles Topol, a rancher in central Canada, was appalled to discover the carcass of his prize bull. The bull was found right here, in this spot right here. Tongue removed, left ear removed, left eye removed. And he was as solid as a drum. He, he wasn't bloated. Whatever or whoever attacked the animal, Topol believes it left behind something toxic. I don't know what it was, but I sure didn't feel good. And my blood count went way out of kilter. It's, it's happened to me two or three times when I went back to the same area. And I would think it's in the soil. Four years after the bull died, something is still affecting the soil at the burial site. I, I think it could be radiation. But I, you know, I can't prove it. I have no way of proving it. But it's, it's something that's affecting me. We'll take a sample right here. Topol takes samples of the soil from the site where the bull was found. He hopes the samples will be enough to help uncover the reason for his physical symptoms. I think this should be sufficient. But he is not the only living thing feeling the effects. This is the area here where the bull is buried. 
and there's absolutely nothing growing in this area right around here. Topol is feeling the same physical effects as last time, shortness of breath and faintness at the site. I'm just not feeling right. It's starting to bother me. I'm getting short of air, short of oxygen. <clears throat> In close proximity, Topol discovered an inexplicable 30-foot circle, almost identical to the ice circle found at the bison mutilation site Bob Campbell has been investigating. Topol sends off the soil samples to Barb for analysis and to see if she can determine any pattern. This is from right at the bowl site. Barb's first step is to test for elevated radiation levels. That's just background. All right. The control sample seems richer and more fertile compared to the sample from the mutilation site. You can definitely see a difference in there's more organic, more uh, natural decay to help the growth. It, it looks healthier. This is actually, growth is really fantastic in this kind of soil. Uh, whereas this, it has some roots and that, but the soil itself is kind of bland. Since Barb cannot make a definitive analysis, she packs up the samples and sends them off to the analytical chemist for further investigation. That's a really interesting one, actually. Veterinary pathologist Nick Nation finds a case that does not fit his scavenger theory. This sequence of photographs is not that which I would expect from a, from a scavenger or a predator. This program contains graphic images of slaughtered animals. Viewer discretion is advised. Monster Quest has journeyed to the plains of North America to search for the mysterious cattle killer. Some theories suggest a human cause, in particular, satanic cults. There was at least one case of horse mutilation where on, in, a, in, a, in a surrounding area, uh, farmers found what they thought were, were five-pointed stars, pentagrams. And pentagrams, upside-down pentagrams, can be indicative of satanic practice. This graffiti was found a few weeks later, two miles away from the scene, with the words dead horse and satanic symbols that prompted police to say the mutilations may be related to satanic rituals. And one such group was active in Western Canada. The Sons in Satan's Service reportedly sent their initiates to cut off parts of animals. One doesn't know if these people were uh, sexual deviants who wanted uh, various animal sexual parts for, for sexual activities, or whether these people wanted to get the blood of animals because they believed that it would give them strength. Dr. Nick Nation believes that so-called cattle mutilation is a normal part of nature. Uh, quite frankly, UFOs and satanic cults don't figure at all in, in the way I look at these things. He believes that the clinical incisions are made by local scavengers, but only after the victim dies quickly and silently from one of many natural causes. We have two or three toxic plants in the province that will uh, kill animals quite quickly, um, even large animals like cattle or horses. And there are a number of other infectious diseases, some of which can uh, kill quite quickly within a matter of hours. These animals are herbivores, so they're biologically evolved to hide weaknesses. Most of the animals we're talking about here are prey species and so they are adapted to hide the fact that they're ill uh, except in extreme circumstances uh, so that they do not attract the attention of uh, the uh, predatory animals. The fact that an animal dies very suddenly is does not necessarily mean it wasn't sick or didn't have something wrong with it. Mother Nature can kill an animal this size without any visible sign. 
Lightning can be very difficult to diagnose and sometimes you don't find scorch marks. So it's not unusual to have mass mortalities in animals that are bunched together that happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time. Dr. Nation's examination of the evidence seems to support his theory until he reaches the final case. The photographs in question are of a dead steer and were taken by a vet near Las Vegas, Nevada. The animal was seen alive and well just 12 hours before the discovery of the damaged carcass. The sequence of photographs is not that which I would expect from a, from a scavenger or a predator. The even serrated cut was sliced at an angle and appears highly artificial. There is a regular serration and secondly, uh, the, the cut through the skin and the muscle is oblique. When a scavenger is pulling its skin, it's a tearing motion and it tends to tear or cut at right angles or close to right angles to the skin surface, not an oblique uh, cut like this. So I'm, I'm really not sure what, what would have caused this. And it's not the only case that makes Nation suspicious. A case from Montana also remains unexplained. What's interesting here is the regular nature of the serrations. Um, that's uh, quite unusual. I wouldn't expect that with a scavenger, but I wouldn't expect that with a scalpel either. Having already tested a scalpel, Dr. Barry Leica tries to replicate these bizarre artificial cuts using a surgical laser. The powers of a laser is that the light is extremely focused and it'll actually cut through the tissue very, very clearly and cleanly. Okay, turn on the smoke there. Well, the laser basically does all the work for you. You don't have to put any pressure on it. It just evaporates and cuts through very cleanly, very smoothly. The end result does not resemble the cuts made by the cattle killers. You see, this tissue is nice and white. Whereas this tissue here is charred. It's got a different color and a different texture. I don't think this is a laser burn because of the type of tissue that's changed by the laser itself. Whoever's doing this is high tech, has the capability of, of bringing the animal down quick, it's usually at nighttime. Nobody hears anything. Barb Campbell wants to see how easy it would be to approach and subdue a cow or a bull at night. She asks a local rancher to help test her theory. We suspect the mutilations are occurring at night in the dark. So we just want to pick this crowd of cows here to test what it'd be like to approach them in the dark. What do you think would happen if I walked down there right now? Nothing. Nothing? They'd probably stop and look, see what's happening, and usually they they won't run away. This herd of 15 is highly sensitive to a stranger in their midst. They know something's different, and uh, maybe they can pick up a scent too, but they are not standing still. Barb cannot get within 30 yards of the herd without the animals stampeding away. Nope. Nope, they're afraid. Yeah, that's it. They're gone. I think what we've just demonstrated here is that um, there is no, uh, they don't associate this particular visit with the light, with food. They don't hear the tractor. Don't, this is something that they're not used to. It's strange. She tries again without a flashlight. They're running away. Yeah, they're running away. While there are many theories for what has been killing these cattle, not one person or beast has ever been seen or caught committing these acts. And the animals that are mutilated, are it's instant death, and right on the spot. There's never a sign of a struggle or anything like that. So how is this being done? 
This program contains graphic images of slaughtered animals. Viewer discretion is advised. Monster Quest is searching the plains of North America, trying to uncover the cause of the horrific and bizarre cattle mutilations that have terrorized this area for 40 years. The authorities say local predators are responsible, but ranchers suggest satanic cults, an unknown predator, or even aliens. This rancher found his bull with parts sliced off, leaving barren ground for years afterward. This man discovered a cow and a calf apparently slaughtered, disemboweled, with no trace of blood at the scene. This woman's horse had its flesh stripped cleanly, a leg completely missing, and no tracks nearby. The team is examining the soil samples from the site where Charles Topol's bull was found. The soil at the burial site does appear to be barren or sterile, which might be a clue to whatever is affecting Topol's health. Barb Campbell's investigation is making progress. The shaved hair found on the dead bison reveals traces of a chemical that should not have been there. What I have here. She takes the lab results to the rancher. Lee Benoit. And this, there was a chemical substance on there, uh, three um, hydroxyanthranilic acid, 3-HAA, okay. and we don't know why it's there. This chemical is related to tryptophan, which may be used as a sedative. Now, in Utah, there was a heifer that was mutilated, and when they did tests on her, they found tryptophan in her, which suggested that she was quite possibly euthanized before she was mutilated. Farmer David Cook's experiment reveals that even after four days, the local scavengers have failed to attack the carcass. Since most cases occur with great speed, often within 24 hours, the ranchers are convinced that the killer is moving much more quickly and efficiently than Mother Nature. And we basically Dr. Barry Leica believes that cold steel is by far the most likely tool being used. Tissue stress. Of the three instruments we have, the most likely to cause a cut like this is a scalpel or a sharp cutting instrument. Dr. Nick Nation believes the majority of these cuts are inflicted by wild scavengers wielding teeth rather than scalpels. He says the proof is in the photos that farmers have taken showing their animals being picked over by scavengers. This is, a, this is an animal that was brought in for a diagnostic postmortem, and the owner had seen coyotes chewing on the carcass. Uh, you can see that what appears to be uh, quite a smooth edge to the, to the defect. When compared side by side, it makes the similarities clear. Smooth cuts and bloodless wounds. Most of these known scavenging pictures are identical to many of the so-called mutilation pictures. In fact, probably most of them. Monster Quest has demonstrated beyond doubt that many of these mutilations are caused by natural predation. However, the absence of predator tracks, the odd positions of the animals, and the strange circles and dead vegetation found at the sites are all beyond the scope of current scientific understanding. The overwhelming evidence goes for natural or social explanations, but there's always the outlying cases, and we would be remiss as scientists or social scientists to write off what we don't know according to what we do know. The series of cattle killing still has the plains and the ranch lands of North America in fear of the unknown. If the scary thing is not knowing and they just strike when you least expect it. It was UFOs or cults or what, I don't know. But I know somebody's doing something. There's no doubt that these reports are going to continue, in part because uh, animals die under mysterious circumstances, and it's difficult, if not impossible, always to figure out what happened. As far as I'm concerned, whoever, whether it's humans or aliens, they're a monster. It's a monstrous thing that's being done.